The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Money Masters. Now, your Money Masters, Tom O'Brien and Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the Money Masters Show, folks. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes. Tom is away on vacation, and in fact, he was uh, up uh, enjoying some uh, great uh, boat races. In fact, I thought I saw him kind of slip in there. You know, I thought I was looking for, I saw the Oracle boat, and I was looking for the TFNN boat up there. Thought I saw it just for a, a clip, uh, a quick a glimpse out there. If we take a look at our market, so I'm going to be joined by Basil Chapman uh, for the uh, full hour today, folks. And our call number is 877-927-6648. Right now we've got the uh, Dow trading down 64 points. We went from a flat day to a three Pesavento index day. Today is a uh, planetary index day. Tomorrow is a full moon. Yesterday was uh, the moon at perigee. So you can expect the fireworks don't just come here, folks, on the 4th of July. We had fireworks on Friday. I expect we're going to see fireworks during the month of July period. Dow right now down 62 points. S&P's off five. Composite off seven. Uh, small caps uh, down uh, not that bad. Down uh, about almost uh, less than two points. Uh, Microsoft trading down 25 ticks. Uh, Intel off 22 cents. Apple up five bucks. Google uh, flat. Uh, you've got... Uh, we take a, a quick look here, and today we're going to spend a little time taking a look at the indexes out there. You know, Basil is really the foremost export on the uh, Dow, uh, has a, a great uh, Dow study report. I know he focuses on the Dow quite a bit in his uh, opening uh, call. Now, if we're taking a look at the indexes, folks, one of the things that I was showing here uh, last week on Friday uh, was just simply the uh, 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 descending tops line, and clearly that descending tops line, descending tops line was taken out inside the uh, Dow. Uh, if we take a look at that, that was starting off of the highs uh, in May first. That high being thirteen three uh, three thirty eight. Uh, 66. Now, what I do suspect is that what we are uh, seeing here, now the normal movement today, you would expect coming into a full moon, you actually want to see the market move down. So it would be a beautiful thing to watch the market move down into tomorrow clock at uh, 1 o'clock while most people are going away, and uh, that would provide you with a nice buying opportunity, in my opinion. Now, uh, at least right now, in my opinion, until I see volume, until I see how things close uh, today and tomorrow. But the market is actually uh, I'm getting my wish so that is a beautiful thing. Now, what you can see here is the descending tops line is going to be tested uh, today. Uh, exactly what that price range is, uh, maybe it's right around the 12,007, you know, 80 ish or so right now, trade out 12,808. The real support on this is going to be going back into the April 10th area, the April 11th area, right down in the 12,700 range. But you can see that uh, descending lines top that was drawn here uh, that was acting as a, a resistance area now we'll see if that acts as support on the way down if we take a look at the other indexes out there let's go take a look at the small caps why the small caps because the small caps certainly on the ETF the IWM confirming an A to B equals CD up on Friday. However, if you do take a look at the index, what is interesting, and you take a look at the descending tops line. Now, this, folks, here is going back to its highs from March 27th out there at the 847.92. That's your first touch point. In this case here, we're just simply drawing a trend line, so we're not taking a look at the co-located uh, open or close on the uh, body. Therefore, that next touch point is going to be the uh, May 1st high uh, out at the 830 mark. And what you can see is what the small cap did, even though they did get over the swing points from June 19th, what did stop it in its place was that descending tops trend line out there. You're trading now below that area, uh, and uh, uh, let's take a look at the uh, spies, see what the uh, spies did. The spies taking out the descending uh, tops line here, the SPX uh, trading right now at 13 5670. Now, the descending tops that I was using on the S&P 500, folks, coming off that May 1st high, uh, then the next two touch points were going to be June 19th and June 20th. Now, you did break through that. Now, what you can do, if you're just simply looking at some trend lines, the actual trend line that you can use now is coming off of the April 2nd high out there at the 1422. That next touch point that you'd have would be that May uh, 1st area. And so that says that as we were, if you were watching the uh, first hour, and I'll go ahead and I'll put the uh, DAX back up on the uh, screen here. Uh, the DAX is actually trying to get inside 
its uptrend channel. You can see here is the uptrend channel for the S&P 500. Interesting how the uh, new descending tops line would probably take you into uh, that spot uh, of uh, trying to get back into the uptrend channel. Now, if we take a look at the AB equals CD up pattern that is uh, out there that is in play on the S&P 500, what you'll also see is right at that area, converging at that area, that area being 1406, you've got the uh, trying to get back in the trend line, you've got this uh, uh, upper, you've got this descending tops line off of the highs going back to April 2nd to the uh, May 1st area. That is on your S&P 500 trading down uh, four points right now. Let's go ahead and finish this thing off uh, as we take a look at the indexes. We'll take a look at the uh, composite out here. Composite trading out at 29.30. The composite here, uh, clearly on uh, Friday, taking out that descending tops line, that descending tops line uh, starting out here on May 1st, the high out there of 3,085. Uh, the next touch point on this happens to be June 20th. So you can see it closed above it. Now let's see how the market trades down today and tomorrow, if it does trade down today and tomorrow, and see if that area holds as support. Before we go to Basel, I'm going to quickly switch over in to take a look at the uh, DAX, and maybe during the uh, 1130 time frame when the uh, DAX closes, Baz will be able to pop this up on the uh, screen as we go over there. Why? Because as we were coming into the close of the uh, Trader's Ed show, we did show the DAX trying to get back inside the uh, uptrend channel. You can see right now trading just below that, and so that is a rejection, but you still have an hour and 15 minutes in trading. Uh, Basil, do we have Basil on the line? Yes, you do. Oh, great. Basil, how are you today? Hi, Steve. How are you? I am doing great. Now, tennis-wise, are we down to the round of 16 over in Wimbledon? Uh, uh oh, okay. I, so, I shouldn't have asked. I, <laughs> no, I, I did watch. I, I watched some of it. Yeah. Uh, but it was a recap. Okay. You know, I never remember numbers like that, but I, I, this is the... This is the important week coming up. This is okay. okay. And Adele got knocked down in the second round. That was really amazing. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> and we, we've had some surprises. But what's, what's really nice is we're looking at, at least I'm looking at a different style of tennis. And that's, I think that's great because it means that, you know, there used to be people uh, like, like Sampras and, um, uh, Sampras and, what was his name again? Ah. Oh, well, you know, I, my, you know, I, my, my favorite guys to watch were, you know, Borg. Uh, Lindell, uh, you know, McEnroe, you know, that, uh, those, well, uh, you know, the, well, the Jimmy, same thing. Jimmy, Jimmy Connors, that's you know, when, right. they steal, when they use steel rackets. <laughs> that's right. Well, you know, back in my day with the wooden racket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, man, I've, I've got plenty of wooden rackets around my, my garage. <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, anyway, so it's, it's, what's nice is that we've got, uh, um, some, some people that have come up out of the blue, and yeah. that that really is terrific because it's talent, it's a surprise, and all of a sudden you get a slightly different uh, way of playing, and instead of you getting just the back of the line, you get people running to the net. I like excitement. I, I like you know I like to see uh, spirit in the game, and uh, that's what's happening. So well, good. Um, well, now, well, now we got spirit in the markets. We certainly we, right, do. We got excitement. You know, for a day that should be pretty flat. Uh, so uh, the Dow, you know, and that's that's one of the areas that you really focus on. Uh, why don't you give uh, listeners your take on the uh, Dow, where we're at, where you think it's uh, going? Maybe I'll, tell you, some what good I'll, support I'll, I'll and, uh, tell you what I'm going to do. Yeah? I'm going to get out of this particular chart, which shows the E-minis. Anyone looking, you'll see that the, the E-minis went from the 1306.75 level. Um, on the uh, that this It was so interesting. At 3 o'clock on Thursday, yes. if that was the end of the month, yes. the monthly charts would have had a completely different picture to 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock on Friday. Yes, yes. It's just fascinating. You do technical studies. You do well, your stay work. With, go ahead and stay with the yes, money. That's fine. That's so you got that I, what I wanted yeah. to say is that the E-mini at the low at uh, about 3.20 or 3.15 on, um, yeah, it was 3.15 on, at 1306.75, yes. you started that rally on Thursday. Yes. And that went, and my technique is a very, the core of the technique is a very simple concept. It, you go from the most identifiable lowest low. This is the way I can explain it best on air the lowest low, and you merely count each successively higher peak, and the, the methodology says as long as the technicals and chart patterns keep confirming, you should go to at least the fourth highest peak, which is where you should be um, 
a little bit cautious, and that's fascinating because I'll explain what's going on. Normally, I do not count the bar that makes the low from a bottom. So if it makes a peak, that doesn't really count. You need to have established a low on the right side, yes. a higher low, yes. to be able to create that V that says it is a low. Otherwise, you don't know. So I count that. And then what happened to, is this morning I showed uh, for subscribers and again the day that a peak E had been made, or a leg E, possibly a peak E was going to be made in the futures. And now they've pulled back quite sharply. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out of this particular chart. And I'm going to show something that I think is kind of... And, and what's actually kind of cool about that, folks, is that Basil was, was using that technique you know, A, B, C, D, you know, E lettering uh, patterns. And, uh, you know, I primarily am using A, B, C, D patterns uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, you know, it's, it's a different lettering, it's a different system, uh, but it was also showing that the 120-minute uh, chart was going ahead and that it was, uh, in, in Basil's case, he calls it, you know, completing the E point or completing, you know, a portion of the move and, and the time to be careful. In my case here, as you're completing that D point, uh, that D projection, the one to uh, two on the 120 minute chart was being made. It was actually two ABCD patterns that were out there, folks. There was the, uh, the one that came off of the uh, lows at 1.30 in the afternoon on June 25th. The low out there was 13.02.50. That was your A point. Your B point came in at 4.15 on June 27th. Uh, your C point was the retracement down where Basil was starting his next uh, uh, count of the uh, Chapman wave out at 2.30 in the afternoon on June 28th. So it's interesting because you're able to utilize Basil technique. Uh, now what, uh, and, and we both got to the same uh, price point out there. Now, in my case here, as the market was making, or as the ES Mini 120 was making the 1 to 2A to be equal CD, what I'm always looking for are bearish candle formations. And in essence, you know, when I came on the air this morning, said, okay, it looks like at 9 o'clock, 9.30, what we were making was a, a, bull, a bearish engulfing candle. It did that at 9.30. Uh, we then got the uh, confirmation of that on the uh, very next candle with the, uh, well, we haven't gotten it yet because the close will be coming into the 1130 time frame on the 120 minute chart. So what, what this helps you understand, folks, is, you know, a couple of different uh, systems that are out there. And it's really great when you can get a couple of them, when you get two of them that come together at the same price. I always say a viable technique should complement other techniques. Absolutely. So now and let's go take a look at your Dow technique. And Now uh, what I did is I spent a lot of time this weekend uh, um, reviewing and going through charts that I've done many, many times before, but I did them with a white background because I know that I've had a lot of questions of people saying, I'm running out of money printing these black charts. Oh, <laughs> how about that? Oh, that's great. That's funny. So I know that feeling very well. But it, uh, So I thought I'd go through these, and the people, if they want to look at them, they can print them out. I've got the Dow here, and you remember we were talking about that leg D that's so necessary in the Chapman way? Yes. Well, what happened was the Dow made a high of 12,898 yes. point 94 on the 19th. Pulled back, that was peak C, pulled back sharply. And where did it run to today? Leg D by going above it at 12,902. Oh, that's so a that, beautiful, that's a beautiful that's thing. That's very folks, important. Folks, we're going to be right back. We're going to spend more time with Basil Chapman taking a look at the uh, Dow charts. Got the Dow down 42 points. Uh, S&P's down two. Composite up one right now. We'll be right back, folks. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, has just launched, and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers where she focuses on small-cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low-priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs. These newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. 
With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you gain access to each host charts and computer screen as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kate Stalter, Dave White, Larry Pesavento, or Victor Jones, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV yet, then visit TFNN.com today to see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain in this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. It's that time of year again, and the Great Panther Silver Summer Silver Giveaway is back. Every day in June, Monday through Friday, we'll be giving away a Great Panther Silver 1-ounce silver bar, and all you have to do to enter is visit the front page of TFNN.com and fill out your entry. Great Panther Silver and TFNN wishing you a great start to the summer. Sign up today to have a chance to win a one-ounce silver bar during the Great Panther Silver Summer Silver Giveaway the whole month of June at TFNN.com. Stock market corrections are the number one reason that a buy-and-hold investment strategy produces the poorest results, and I have 73 years of data that proves it. Now, the good thing about economic difficult times is that the worst economy can produce the best rewards in the shortest period of time. In fact, during the last 130 years, 61% of that time period has been spent in recession. And if you're one of the 70% of American households relying on their 401ks and IRAs for retirement, you need the single strategy that is bulletproof against the turmoil of our stock markets. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com under Breaking News, click on Success is a Numbers Game to receive this must-have free report. This bulletproof strategy may be days away from giving the next signal. Don't neglect your retirement, and don't neglect this signal. If you're even a little bit interested in accumulating wealth, providing a better life for you and your family, then go to TFNN.com to order your free copy of Success is a Numbers Game today. Implement the disciplines contained in this report, and success will be yours for the taking. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Steve Rhodes here with Basil Chapman today on the Money Masters show. We've got the Dow down 37 points. S&P's off uh, one uh, composite up four. You got Apple trading up uh, nine bucks. Uh, Google up sixty three cents. And in the uh, world of currencies, you know the euro had one huge move on uh, Friday. Uh, went from a low of one point two four three eighteen all the way up to one point two six nine one five. Folks, that is a large move. You've had the euro uh, basically. Uh, it's trading at its session lows. It is uh, traded down all evening long, all morning long. Uh, it is at the one point two five eight. Mark, this is headed down to 1.25153. That'd be the 0.618 area. Uh, we're going to go back to uh, Basil Chapman, and we're going to take a look at the uh, Dow chart. So, uh, Basil, take her away. Well, thank you. Um, so, what I'm showing here, and this is once again, this is the, the white background chart. So, uh, my my our engineer says they are way clearer. I hope oh, they okay, are. good, good. <laughs> <laughs> so, what I'm looking at, and you might wonder why at the twelve thousand eight ninety eight level there was a sharp pullback from the peak C top, and why it would not negate the buy signal or the yes. buy mode. Yes. Well, if you look closely, first of all, it needs to come back a lot further to negate that, to make it a C minus. That means it's a failure. It would have to go back probably to within 10. I don't want to, I, I never like to make a fixed number because the technicals are very important as well. Okay. But I'd say within, within 10 to 15 percent of the original low, if it makes, if, if, if it comes down to that level and then holds, holds steady, 
I will so, still so keep that as the, active. Okay, so so it had to come down in the twelve thousand two hundred ish range or what have right. you. And you see this this gray line that I've just uh, highlighted with the dots there. Yes, that is in fact the two hundred period exponential moving average, which both it and the E minis. In fact, a number of the charts showed that that was very important support. Yes. So lo and behold, that's where it takes off, and today it made that requisite leg D up. Now yes. you see the arch. The cup formation here between C and the low and D. Yes. That pattern is something that I have to watch really closely. Why? Because it does it does three things. We now have fighting patterns. If you look at the de declining trend line, remember you just drew one yes, that was absolutely. broken, the tr declining trend line, but you see the lower lows that was made, that's another declining uh, uh, trend line. I call that a falling axe pattern. Really what it is is a de declining expanding cone. So that's a very long, you know, yes. it's complicated to, to understand. All it is, think of an ice cream cone pointing down. What happens if you decisively break above it, you can get a one-to-one -one of the entire move, but I like to start very carefully, and I say from the most important left side low, you can get a one-to-one -one on the upside, and that would be from the 12,450 area. Right. But a number of things have to happen. See the MACD, the, the green and red lines? That MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, is a set of moving averages, exponential moving averages, is still positive, but the slow stochastic has had a very sharp move, and it's still only at 57%. Yes. It's got a long way to go. So I like to look to the left side and say, well, wh where, where would we have something parallel? Well, we had something kind of parallel to that on the in the correction about the 19th of April pullback, and then it went further higher. So now it's up to the market to tell me, because I said there were fighting patterns. It broke above the resistance, but within this is that pattern that I call the arch that looks like an, a lowercase h if you come down from the 13,338 high of peak D all the way down to the trough D at 12,036. That, that arch formation says be careful because it must decisively break above that to uh, initiate and garner energy to be able to tackle the next, the next left side high, which is around about 12,931. So those are the patterns I like to look at, and this is what I show my subscribers every day, how we're we going about it, what techniques we're using. And if you look at the weekly chart, it's the same thing. We've got fighting chart, chart pa um, um, patterns. Up here, you've got the weekly chart, you've got a rising a rising channel, but I only wanted to put in the lower ones because that's the only thing that's important right now. So those two dashed line tracks, I call an inside track, and as long as it holds the support over the next three weeks, two to three weeks, if at any point the Dow breaks under 12,200, certainly if it breaks under 12,035, the low of uh, last, uh, was it, uh, a few weeks ago, that's going to negate any strength, that will be very negative. And then all of a sudden I look and I say, wait a minute, he's holding the nine period moving average, so the up, up trend is still in, is very important. But within it, you see there's a left side arch from the previous high last April. Absolutely. And this April, that's what I'll be looking at. Absolutely. That's great. Uh, thanks, Basil. Uh, folks, our phone number, 877-927-6648. You get a two for today. You can give us a call. Speak to Basil or myself. Got the Dow down 57. S&P's off four. We'll be right back, folks. Would you like a personal update from Tom O'Brien as to what equities he's trading and what his daily trading plan is before the market opens each morning? Every market day, Tom O'Brien sends out his daily newsletter, Market Insights, to hundreds of subscribers that rely on his daily recommendations when it comes to navigating these highly volatile markets we're dealing with. As recently as May 21st, Market Insights subscribers closed out all five open positions for a combined profit of over 68% in one day. Profits ranged from 6.5% to over 24%, and all of these trades had been initiated within the previous 30 days. Now is the perfect time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's explosive trading newsletter, Market Insights, an $85 value. Tom breaks down the market each morning with his market take and provides trade recommendations including precise stops and target profit zones, leaving nothing left to guessing. Log on to TFNN.com today and sign up for your two-week free trial. Make sure you're a subscriber the next time Market Insights subscribers close out multiple winning trades. Take action and sign up for your free trial today.
If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intra-week trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation location and the Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and certified financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC, member SIPC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when temporary market spikes move against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the advantage of keeping your trades open even when the market temporarily spikes against you. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique short-term binary options that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back to the Money Masters Show, folks. It is the July 4th week edition, and uh, it's myself, Steve Rhodes, and Basil Chapman today. You can always give us a call at 877-927-6648. Dow's off 62 right now. S&P's off 4. Composite uh, showing a little bit of strength here, up a point. The only thing that is green out there. Well, the NDX is up 36 cents as well. Uh, if we do take a look at what is putting pressure on the markets here, it is the uh, currency pair. It is King Dollar. King Dollar up 31 ticks right now, and that's all about the euro. Now, the euro has completed a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD on the way down. Uh, it has done that on a 30-minute chart. So if you are following us on Tiger TV, you're getting the flavor of both uh, Basil's charts and myself as well. We're going to take a look at the uh, small caps uh, next. We're going to take a look at the IWM, but just so you understand where the uh, pressure in the uh, market is coming from, from. It is coming from the uh, primarily from the euro currency pair. If I, I took a look at the pound, not a lot going on in the pound. Uh, the yen as uh, well. Uh, now the uh, what, what when you take a look at the. Uh, a, B, C, D down on the 30-minute chart on the uh, euro, uh, what you are see is, what you do see is that the uh, C to D leg, folks, you can see that the strength of the move on that C to D leg, much stronger than the uh, strength of the A to B leg. Why do I say that? I keep, I maintain the tool that I have on this uh, charting software, maintains the exact same angle. And it's very important when you're taking a look at that C to D leg. You see, you know, the market is going to make an A to B equals C D leg. And it's going to do that 60% uh, of the time. It's going to make a one-to-one. -one. 
The other 40% of the time, it's going to make something other than a one-to-one. I say 1.272, 1.618, 2.0, 2.618, and you want to have those areas marked. The market will always give you clues. If you're patient enough to sit there and wait, the market will absolutely give you clues. It has not given you a clue yet. Well, it has given us clues. It's given us clues that it's going to make more than a one-to-one A to B equals CD down. Uh, where is it likely going to get to? Well, I think you know the next mark on the way down is 1.25. It uh, looks like 400, 1.25397. However, what it will more likely travel down to is the 618 area, which also happens to be a 1 to 2, A to B equals CD. Uh, that would be in the 1.25153. And the beauty here, folks, is that we're coming into a, a full moon tomorrow. You had a 3P index date today. Uh, that would suggest that you were going to see some type of a market turn as well. And what I do believe is that this may likely be setting up a nice buying opportunity. So uh, even though you might want to be kicking your holiday off early tomorrow, it might be a good thing to be around your screens around 1230. Let's go back to uh, Basil. Basil, uh, do you have the IWM uh, chart notated? I by... certainly do, yes. Why don't, why don't we go ahead and we'll pull up uh, Basil's chart on the uh, small caps out there. Now, re- the reason why I want to take a look at the uh, small caps, folks, is that on Friday, the IWM did, you get, did provide a confirming signal of an A to B equals CD up. Uh, and what I mean by that, folks, is as it crossed the B point, that was the June 19th high, uh, the small caps did 60, just under 67 million shares. Friday, on the uh, nice gap up, you did 71 million shares. You closed above that. You know, you expect to run into turbulence because of just simply the supply line going back to April 10th. And so let's go take a look at Basil's chart, see how he has no, uh, things notated. Let's see if we've got any parallel working uh, patterns out there utilizing complementary systems. So, Basil, take her away. Well, what we're looking at, the iShares, Russell 2000 Index Trust, it's tra- IWM is the symbol, 79.42 right now, down 15 cents. Now, I needed to see this either break the low, oops, sorry about that. No, you needed can still to- use your black charts, that's okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm going right to the black charts. I, I can't remember now if I go to the IWM, I know that I did the Qs, the S&P, yes. the Dow, the NYA. Anyway, so what we've got now is at on the 28th of June at 75.42, there was a little doji candle. Yes. That was critical because if the IWM broke under it, not only would you have been repelled from that downtrend, you see the green and the red lines that I have here? Absolutely. That's what I call, the, in my CD introducing the Chapman Wave methodology, I talk about something that I developed called the inside track. And what it says is that when you get um, either, in this particular case, a cone formation or a channel formation, at the outer borders, you can draw an inside line. I usually make it a dashed line, but I want you to be very clear, so I made it bright red here. Yes, because uh-huh. if it's repelled, and it's always been repelled since the top at 84.66, if it's repelled from that line, that's negative. But if it breaks above it, I've got it green. And that says that is a positive. Why? Because of that pattern that I call the expanding wedge, that falling X. If, if it starts to hold... I have to now consider that what was once resistance, and that would be the resistance around about the 7840 level, could become support. I did expect that if it was going to break to the upside on Friday that I'd get a leg D, and yes, we've got a leg D on Friday, we've got a leg D today. So now in the Chapman Wave, this is called a leg D, and I know there are a lot of words to but it's just one picture that tells the story, and the picture will be if there is a lower high bar, I say high bar because it's the full bar, right. so if there's a higher a high, if there's a lower high tomorrow, from instead of 79.95, let's say that's the high today. Yes. If it's 79.94, that confirms that we've now got a peak D. Yes. And in the waveform, as you can see, when it made a peak D with a doji high back on the first, yes. that was when it turned around. When it made a peak D on, at 84.66 on the 27th of March, that's when it turned around. When it made a peak D at 83.31 on the 17th of March, that's when it turned around. So it's really... It's it's a, it's a technique I discovered when I used to hand chart the, the Dow, the, the FTSE uh, 30, and the Nikkei years and years ago. I used to hand chart with engineering paper, all these little squares to take. And when, and when the crash of, uh, 
of October 19th, 1987 came. Yes. None of the computers could give you anything accurate. I could get an absolute accurate account because all I did is I got my 15-inch ruler, I stuck in, oh, I had to great. glue a couple of pieces together, and I managed to draw a straight line. And that said to me, wow, I believe we've made a bottom. And actually, I said on my next uh, days, um, uh, I, I used to have a... Um, a call-in service. Yes. I said the Dow within 18 months should make new highs. So you, the technique is the same thing. There I was waiting for a D and I got a D and I said, you know what, I think we have to wait in August. I think there's going to be a leg E and it went to leg E and I can't remember, 27, 22. I can't remember the exact number. And that worked out. So that developed as a seven-way form going to leg D. And eventually I found you can actually go higher. So now this is the very interesting thing. You asked me about the, uh, the, the IWM. The IWM in the 120 minute chart is in an up channel. And you can see I spoke about that up track yes. resistance. Yes. Well, if that up track resistance goes all the way to um, 80.32 to around about 80.76. So on the upside, those are going to be the levels. If in the next, if this week the IWM breaks above that, then I've got to consider that's very powerful action. And then we could even retest the high of um, 82.97. That would be the high of the 4th of May. Right. And if we, break, if we start to break down, I have to consider that that H pattern is going to be active. And that would only be if it breaks under 77.80. So those are the parameters. That's how I use my work. I show the parameters. And in this particular instance, you haven't got a sell signal yet in the IWM until you make peak D. And then I have to assess, is the stochastic much lower than the MACD? Is there a negative divergence? What's happening? Right. Now, now Basil, when, when, uh, you know, when I'm drawing down, you're using A, B, C, Ds, your lettering, in essence, really just to, to show the next wave, the next, uh, the next All peak. I'm doing is that each capital letter on the upside shows a higher high bar, and it can go to D, E, F, and even a G. It's got nothing to do with A to B equals That's C right, to That's right, exactly, D. exactly. And so when we use the A to B equals C D patterns here, uh, and we take a look at a pullback, we're able to utilize, you know, some Fibonacci retracement. Do you use Fibonacci retracement at all? I uh, yes, after I you, you do. I, okay. I do. I have favorites of Fibonacci numbers that I use, and actually, when it gets to two point six expansion yes it can go a little higher but that's where you're getting to very critical extended positions so absolutely that's one of the the bit the larger numbers that i use yes and and and, and i use that as well and really that's what we had going on in the es mini uh, this morning on the uh, 10 minute chart, it was up at 2.618 expansion. So it was an indication that it was, uh, it was extended and you'd see some type of pullback. But now on the uh, downside here, let's just say that, uh, you know, we see a market pullback. In the case of the IWM, you wouldn't get any type of uh, confirming signal until Thursday now. Is that correct? Because it made a higher high today? And I will not get a be... confirming signal until tomorrow if there's a lower high because that'll be D. Okay. But normally what I will wait for is I'll be checking the 120 minute chart, but I'll be waiting to see as the pullback starts to unfold, how are my technical indicators working? What are they doing? But you know, I've said for a long time that we've got to make it really simple and it has three letters, VIX, ah, the volatility go. index. Yeah. And on Thursday, when we closed below 20, that was the trigger to say, be careful, because there could be a sharp, a sharp move to the upside. How sharp, it doesn't say, right. but it did say that. And then what happened on Friday is that the volatility index went from 1971 down to 1687. That was quite a pullback. But you can see that the volatility index is starting to form some kind of a base here. Yes. So we've got to watch that closely. So that means it needs to go all the way back to 20 to get a kind of a sell signal in the market. That means you've got time and price to the downside. And at this point, we're just looking at yo-yo fluctuations. Yeah, and, and, you know, we've been, it's obviously been a very, very choppy market here uh, so far uh, in uh, June. You know, we're starting off uh, July with a little bit of fireworks, end of June with some fireworks. And so in your work, you know, are you taking a look at, uh, do you have a, in, in the work that you did over the weekend, do you have a sense with regard to whether you're seeing the market move back and test those May highs? Or you know you haven't you're not really able to get there yet just simply you know, that, you know that's a that's a fantastic question that of course is not just the sixty four dollar question but the <laughs> the sixty four thousand dollar question Bec and I'll explain why when when you see the kind of strength that you've you've had in a general electric yes 
when you see a strength in, uh, but at the same time, the, my, I've got my four Dow, uh, I call them my index stocks. I, it's not really an index, but I call no, them I index stocks. No, I understand, yeah, but, but you look for, you, you've got, you've right. got four different areas where you can look to get a feel right. for, well, for what's the, that's right. Right, UTX is really my pilot light stock, and it is acting terribly. Okay. So I'm saying to myself, okay. Is this this bifurcated market I've been talking about for a while right. where you've got certain stocks that you've got? For instance, I kept all my short positions for subscribers from Thursday, Friday, even yes. though they hit, they hit the 200 period moving average exactly with huge downside gains. I just say to myself, these are sectors that are making hat-trick tops. That is monthly, weekly, daily tops that are tops of significance. I've got to focus on the downside. If I'm wrong, the price will tell me. So the same thing is happening here. I'm... I, and so I'm just, just, to, just so just so our listeners, you know, because I mean, I understand what you're talking. You no know, hat trick, you know, uh, you know, a a, a a folks that's obviously taken from uh, hockey. I suppose it's taken from hockey. No, it's you, taken from cricket. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never played cricket, so I, it's taken from hockey, <laughs> where you score three goals. You and I would be terrible in, in cricket. Well, I played cricket. It's such you can be there five hours and you can actually catch the ball three times if you're on the outfield. No, I mean, the, the moment that you look around to wave to your friends, that's the only time that the it? ball came to you. Oh, that's so I funny. played wicket keeper because that was the most active. Oh, thing. That, that's great. <laughs> but when, when when Basil's talking about a hat trick, you're you're taking a look at three time frame charts. And when the monthly where they're but I have to wait go ahead. Right. The monthly has to complete its 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 it's moved to the upside. Give me signals that it's going down because when the monthly, the tide, the major tide is starting to turn down. Absolutely. You do not want to be fighting the currents unless you say this is a very short-term trade or whatever it is, but you're going counter to the trend. Yeah. And on a monthly chart, when you get to a, a peak D, uh, obviously you've got to wait a full 30 days, you know, just to confirm that. Correct. You know, then, 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 what takes over? You know, once you're in that monthly chart, is it is it is it the weekly chart or the daily well, you, chart? Well, you asked or? me about the IWM. Yeah. You see the IWM. Well, first of all, anyone looking at this chart, you will see that there are two. I call them eyebrows. This is the Groucho Marx eyebrows uh, top. It's a double top. You see the little eyebrow there? I the do. Eyebrow there? I, okay. Look, I, I have, know, I've got the, the Groucho schnoz, Marx glasses, you know, in my Right. Uh, well, there are the schnoz to the downside. Well, what happens is when you get a top like that, you've got to be careful because if there is a failure in the stochastic and the MACD is making, as you can see, this very wide turn to the downside, Yes. that says... Be careful because your major indicators, which kept you this fast moving average, that yellow line, kept you in the trade all the way through as it held above the red line, the slow moving average. Once it breaks down, yes. you see how it's deflected. The IWM is deflected lower here. Absolutely. And that, that last rally failed to go above 86, 82. And we have to appreciate that the IWM has made a 153% gain from Abs the 34.26 low. Yes, absolutely. We deserve some kind of a time. At. And I'm considering that this, for me, is at this point I still have to consider it a timeout because we're in this very wide trading range. And you can see the IW went right to where, right on the 200 period exponential moving average of 60.09. Yes. And now there's been a rally in the technicals, but they really didn't confirm the strength of the price. Yes. Yes. So this is a very critical area because the IWM is holding above the 9 EMA. If in July. It breaks down and starts to get anywhere into the 75s. That'll be very negative. But if it's able in the second or third week of July to get to, say, 83, yes. that says, ha, still strength there. Stay tuned, folks, while Basil and I go into the last segment, and then you're going to be able to stay tuned and catch Basil's show. After that, we've got uh, Larry Pesavento, and uh, folks got the Dow off 55, S&P's off too. We'll be right back. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll 
get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Great Basin Gold is a mining company engaged in the exploration and development of two emerging gold properties in Nevada and South Africa with a total resource base of more than 23 million gold ounces. Great Basin Burnstone Mine in South Africa opened in February of this year with a resource of 20 million gold ounces, becoming the first mine to open in the historic Whitwaters Rand Basin in the last 30 years. The Burnstone Mine is projected to have a 25-year mine life and is fully financed with production anticipated to be over 250,000 ounces per year at a cash cost of only $450 per ounce. The Hollister Mine in Nevada became fully integrated in the fourth quarter of 2010 with annual production estimates of 110,000 ounces of gold per year over the eight-year mine life at a cash cost of only $527 per ounce. Great Basin Gold is cash flow positive and trades on the Toronto and New York Stock Exchanges under the symbol GBG. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back to the Money Masters Show, folks. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, joined by Basil Chapman today. And stay tuned, Basil will be up uh, next for a full hour, then Larry Pesavento. After that, from 12 to 1, you get the Dow off 52 points, S&P's off uh, 2. And uh, pay attention to the DAX. The DAX will be closing at 1130. It is trying to get back inside its uptrend channel. That goes all the way back into September 2011. Uh, it has been outside of that channel uh, ever since uh, May 31st. And uh, so you want to pay attention to that. Certainly join me uh, tomorrow, and we'll take a look at that. Uh, if you take a look quickly here at the Dow stocks, uh, leading the Dow on the way down, uh, Caterpillar off a of buck fifty four, Dupont off a of buck forty four, Exxon Mobil down eighty six on the way up, American Express and Verizon Communications in the IBD world, liquidity resources truly under pressure, uh, down eleven bucks right now and change. Under Armour off a couple of bucks. Let's go to our third co-host, Rick in British Columbia. Rick, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Guys. You bet. And uh, Basil, Rick wanted to. Uh, comment on or talk about the IWM. So go right ahead, Rick. 
Well, it looks to me like we've confirmed an ABC structure up. Yes. And um, like Bud used to always say, um, you know, if you look hard enough, there's inverted head and shoulders or head yes. and tops. The IWM has a beautiful inverted head and shoulder, um, you know, with the neckline in uh, uh, early of last month and, and Yes. And later. And it looks like it could take it up to that uh, May 1st high up there. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think that... Uh, Plus, I, we have an ABC structure. That's right. Well, you do have an ABC structure. You know, I mean, you did you did get over the swing point of June 19th with volume. Uh, June 19th at 67 million. You got over it on Friday with 71 million. So that confirms uh, a 1 to 1A to be up to the 81.56. That gets you inside the uh, May 1st swing point. And, uh, you know, I'd expect 82.15 is the .786. It sets up a nice Gartley uh, cell. It's not a Tiger Gartley on the IWM, but it does set up a, a Gartley cell area. So, now, yeah. I don't know if you look on the hourly, but just short term, this is caters to exactly what you just uh, were saying earlier. You know, looking for a pullback for the next day or two and then or maybe possibly a reversal tomorrow. But if you put it on an hourly, like a five-day, for example, I got it on a 10-day. Yes. Um if you put it on a 10-day, there again, you got a little inverted head and shoulder. We finished it. Right. But you see how um, the big move was done lighter volume. Right. Early, right? And so that would just take us back to the neckline around 77.50. Now, I don't know if we're going that low. We may just go into the gap. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. But... Uh, but now, anyway, now one of the things that I, one of the things that I do, Rick, and I, so I don't know if it, if it's just on my charting software. Since we have a six and a half hour trading session, instead of using a sixty minute chart, I'll always use a thirty minute chart because you've got one lopsided thirty minute session. Yeah, well, that's uh, a good point. On an hourly, so so I, I the problem is that I can't really trust the volumes there as I'm trying to benchmark volumes. So so I just I, if your charting software you know handles hourly different, I, I just prefer the thirty minute chart. No, that up there. is good. I'm just curious, where is it lopsided? Is it lopsided in the first hour or the last half hour? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. That's, yeah. I, I've, I'll have to, I'll have I, to. Keep, I keep thinking about it, but I never really understood it. It's funny you mention that. You know? Yeah, so I, I stopped using, on the currency side, that's a different story. But when it comes to the ETFs or the indexes or any stocks, I just I stopped using the 60-minute the chart. Uh, it just simply, because I like to take a look at volume, you know, as do you as well. So I just thought I would throw that out there. Yeah, now I'm just curious with the euro. Yes. If there's any possible way, and there again. I mean, it had a head and shoulder top. The neckline's at 130. We know there's a lot of people short. We know July is, you know, very light trading. The big boys are gone, so they can move the market. But, um, and then there's even, a, I see a gap at 131. Is there a hope we can get up there? Well, I tell you what. Basil is going to take on the Euro just for you, Rick, because we just came to the close of our show. But thanks for calling. Thanks for, okay, thanks. Uh, you know, thanks for calling. We appreciate that. Folks, stay tuned. Basil Chapman will be up next. Take a look at anything that you'd like that we didn't get to. 877-927-6648. And you get in line right now. Basil, thanks so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate that. All right. Have a great day. Have a day. great day. Uh -huh.